Hello and welcome back to Before the Bat, the Pennyworth Podcast. That's right, Governor. I yeah. am Phil. <laughs> Joe back again, making his triumph for return. <laughs> yeah, so, kind of poster boy. <laughs> Some family stuff going on. Uh, kind of just kept me from being a part of things last week. So, so I said it. it I said it was just something medical, but. Start the episode. I said, "See, Tyler, things will turn out all right." Is it? I was all caught up there. I was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say before we jump into this week's episode, um, maybe we should uh, should let I should let you have the floor for a few minutes to uh, to uh, tell everyone what you thought of last last uh, week's episode. Did someone say Satan? I just I don't know like okay we're about to do episode 8 of a 10 episode season mm-hmm. without any confirmation of a season 2 and I feel like those past two episodes were almost pointless <laughs> like I really like they they diverged the story did they really create something that couldn't have been done differently what I said last week, last week's episode almost seemed like Alfred was almost a supporting character in his own show. Yeah, it was. And it, it took so much away from the other story that we're trying to tell. And once again, I don't, I, I've said this repeatedly, like this show should be approached as this is our season. We need to make sure that we make a solid story and give the, a good story or something. Like if they would have made this really about Martha Kane bruce wayne and alfred meeting and then at the end of the season they part ways so you have this idea of that's how they met mm-hmm. and somehow they come back together but i'm like what what's going to happen because the time this season ends like there's really nothing there like there hasn't been any kind of relationship really built between these three characters um i just felt like last week's episode was such a it almost feels like the kind of episode you write for filler when you have 22 episodes to fill. Yeah. Like if it was a 22 episode show. Okay. We went off on a little bit of a tangent, but I, I, the, the, I just wonder just thinking about it now, I wonder if like last week's episode is supposed to be a catalyst to like, if all three characters come together and like they have to take down Crowley or something eventually. Well, see, I was wondering because the way that this episode ended, uh, I thought they were bringing in Crowley back um, as he was going to be the one that was actually like the related to the queen or whatever. Yeah. That they were going to try to assist to take over for the queen. Um, Something like that, you know, coming, pulling it together. But I, I don't know. Like last week's episode was, it was okay. The most interesting thing was at the end that you find out that Alfred's father is a member of the Raven Society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That and let's see. I think when Alfred tried to like ask about the bartender's daughter, and he's like, "Is she about?" He says, "No." He's like, "What's that for?" Just tell her I'm sorry for whatever it is. I know. Then the bartender seemed fine this week. Yeah. So I mean, it they just feels like daughter. They. I don't know. I just. I wasn't too thrilled over it. it. Was was it trying to be serious? Was it trying to be meta? Meta. I can't even think straight. But like with the whole Thomas Wayne has a devil in him and all this type, meeting the devil and then. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was just like, you know, what is the family curse now? I'm, I'm still waiting for. Oh, you, you're going to be trend in a dark alley. Or just like some sort of like symbolism of like this dark omen of a bat that's put on him or something. I don't know. Um, or. You know, Crowley actually is a minion of Ra's al Ghul or something. I don't know. That's really the devil that they're seeing. Yeah, you know, there could have been some, twi- some twists or something. But it just, I don't know. It just felt like this is the episode that you would do if you were writing a show and you needed your Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, the one we're about to talk about now, I actually like much more. Oh, yeah. Well, we got a lot more Al- Alfred. This felt like we went back to the show that we were watching. Mm-hmm. So we were watching a show, and then we went off course, and now we're back to our show. That's was like, is it, you know, is, is were we going to get, you know, is this setting up something up big for Thomas and Martha last week, or was Crowley going to be a big thing? But yeah, I don't so, know. I, yeah, that's, uh, that's why I was like, okay, what, what, what is this? But, 
But yeah, episode eight. Here we are. Sandy Two Shaw. More Two more to go. Yeah, Sandy Shaw, who is an English singer. Uh, oh, of course, one of the most successful British female singers of the 60s because of, like, I think I said it last week. If you look at the summary for the show, it says set in the 60s. So, yeah, set in the 60s, but not yeah, our yeah. 60s. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a Siskies esque, but I mean, it's, it's whatever. Like, it's, it's an alternate history type thing. Yeah, I'm always looking at like these, uh, like, you know, like the wikis for these titles to see if there's something there because, uh, her big number one singles were There's Always Something There to Remind Me, Long Live Love, and Puppet on a String. Hmm. Puppet on a String. Interesting. But yeah, I mean, this episode, I mean, had a little bit more fun with the, uh, you know, with the, the uh, what's it, Sykes, you know, and Alfred kind of teaming up in a sense. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah. Me. Yeah, Bet and Alfred, yeah, teaming up. You have uh, Alfred going to try to find, uh, going to the, find out basically the police were just, Esme's murder was, whew, 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 you know. Oh, yeah, because the killer's father is like a uh, member of parliament. Yeah. And it, I was like, okay. So, you know, that's cool because that pulls it back. And I was kind of waiting to see if, you know, the stuff with the queen. Because, you know, we, we introduced her in the first episode when she gave Alfred his medal that she was going to pull Alfred out. And, and basically, the Queen and Prime Minister are going to have Alfred execute the Raven Society. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something like that. But it's like, that's the story I want. Mm-hmm. Not some of this other stuff they've gone into. Well, that's why I keep waiting for all this to, like, dovetail together. I mean... I don't know. Well, well, Alfred's well, Alfred's father's working for you know one of them, and he's at the rallies and everything. And just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just feels like if this show wasn't called Pennyworth, at this point, would I still be watching it? If I didn't have that just slight interest, I like the character of Alfred. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like it has a clear enough focus of what the show wants to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it seemed like we had a nice, like, grounded in reality thing, and then yeah, now we're getting Crowley. Oh, is he, does he really work for the devil? Well, I mean, even then, like, it was about him forming his security company. So, like, you could have this idea of the show not being like a, like a police procedural, but basically Alfred working security while trying to solve Esme's murder, or mm-hmm. You know, just, I mean, how hard would it have been to write in that he got hired with for Martha Kane and was, like, her security through, like, her adventure, you know? It's like they just, I don't know. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It just seems, it almost seems like, yeah, they really don't want him with them too much, but they used him to introduce them. Yeah, but but even then, it's like, the, the, there's still no chemistry between those two characters. Oh, I know. Oh, Thomas and Martha? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they were trying to do that this week because, you know, she did come to see him and she's like, oh, you're a mess. So let's sit down and have a drink and stuff, you know. But it's, she still want to talk to him about being CIA and about she wants to be in, that she mm. could be an agent. So it's not even about him. Um, but, I mean, I like this episode as far as it felt more like what we got. Um, Dave Boy and Baz were really in the background. I know he just like walks in there. And there was a, like a full on bar fight going at one point. He was just like, "Yeah, okay, do this, do this, do this, okay." And they just like walk out in the middle of this bar fight. And then you know, it 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 felt with, I mean, the whole thing about Esme's murder felt weird about it. Like they were forcing this person from Alfred's past to just happen to murder her as revenge on him. Just you know, this captain guy just felt weird but now it's pointing to a bigger picture well that's what i was trying to remember i was like did they ever say like one that when him and you know he worked with this guy because i was like it seems like that all of a sudden the guy just out of nowhere the guy just like all of a sudden decided to do this or has he been following Alfred for that long but i was like unless it's part of like a bigger conspiracy or and something then he, and then when they when they met like when he pulls off the mask, they talk as if they've never really met before. 
I was like, oh, maybe they just worked together that one time, so they knew of each other, but they really didn't know. Right, and that's what was I thought was weird. Um, mm. And I like that Alfred's like, I came alone. And <laughs> he's like, honestly, I did. And then Bet showed up. <laughs> Put the knife to the eye. The police officer's throat. She's like... <laughs> I just love. He's like, aren't you supposed? To, Alfred's like, aren't you supposed to be dead? She's like, ah, oh, it's a long story. And then she was like, I can't <laughs> condemn certain parties about it. Um, so I mean, it was and she's like, Esme is my friend. He's like, you guys met once. He's like, Esme is my fiance. She's like, ah, oh, man's love. I love how Beth's like. I've never done anything to you lately. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did like though when. Alfred just shot the dude in the head and then shot the nanny in the head. But oh, it, yeah, because, like, cause, like Bet was, like, going to, like, torture them or whatever, and Alfred's just like, enough of this. Boom, boom. I would have just liked it better if Alfred had just come walking in and, like, just, like, walked by him, shot them both in the head and kept walking. Like, caught everybody off guard because he didn't say anything. He just took them both out. Well, I was waiting for it. I, I was waiting. I was like, this is obviously a trap. Don't tell me he's going to fall for this. But when, so when he was like, yeah, I know this is a trap. I don't care. I was like, okay, good. At least he knows. Oh, yeah, I just wanted him to go walk in, shoot them both, and then just, like, they didn't have time to spring the trap. Like, the guy's mm-hmm. already dead. <clears throat> but, that, the, but the old lady was like, he said he's his nanny. <laughs> it's like privileged people. What did she say? Something in perverts, all of them. I was going to say, was it like a sexual thing? Because, like, they were like, you dirty bird. Because Bet's like, I know about that stuff, you pervert. But, um... You know, you you had that moving. You had a little bit with Thomas and Martha, and then you, of course you have the Big Raven Society <sighs> meeting. And did uh, you? Okay, so did you feel like maybe the members of the Raven Society may have taken over the policemen's uniforms, or the policemen are members, just because the way they reacted to Lord Harwood? Um. Because I'm like the heat, you know, he pulled up to stand down when they were beating. Yeah. Like if that was like staged. I don't know. Um, it could have been staged. Some of the they could be members, or maybe it was just like, oh hey, you guys are going against the country. Don't you want to be, you know, don't you want to be, you know, patriotic or whatever? Yeah, but even then, like they're following like orders from their, you know, their prime minister. I just didn't know if yeah, if someone if they were in on it, or I mean, they might show it next episode, or if like. They're trying to show that, like, oh, yeah, look how dangerously charismatic this guy is. He can, you know, turn how many people against us at a drop of a hat. So, I don't know. I mean, that's that's just how I felt about it because it just felt like, I don't know, the police wouldn't normally just listen to him. Like, there had to be something more to it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends how popular he was before he disappeared. Yeah. And I was like, I would have liked to have got to know him more. That's true. In the first episode, because it's like we just saw him in the house, and at first they're like, "Oh, are you the leader of the Raven Society?" I am. And they're like, "No, oh, they brush it off." Like, "No, you're not." And then he actually was, and I don't know. It just feels like felt weird, like we missed something, and I just would have liked to have seen him more, like, a, um, like he was a bigger deal, like a more prominent figure in society. And did he put on like that? metal nose for effect because i swear he had like more realistic looking noses on before yeah it just looked like he had a it looked real but it was more like white looking yeah 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 it was just like like, a a silver piece that you know he came walking out and i was like his name is golden nose that's what i'm saying i don't know if it's like if it was supposed to be menacing or if he was even if he was just like oh look what they look what they've done to me they cut it cut my nose off but you know at least they didn't uh, like give him like a raven's beak or something like. Yeah, put on the, it was like a raven. Because that, that, that on because that Doctor Gout was like, oh, they tortured him and left him for dead. So I just wondered if he put that on the show. I was like, oh yeah, they tortured me. Maybe maybe that gained some sympathy where it's like, look, they cut the you know those wankers cut my nose off. But I mean, it was it was a cool episode. I just I don't know. It's just like where where are you going? How are you going to wrap it up? Because I don't know. I don't want to to be left with this like, okay, to be continued. And then they're like, Pennyworth is canceled. 
I just wonder if there's going to be like a big war between the Raven Society and some, you know, the other side, and Crowley's in on, with one side, and everyone's like trying to overthrow the Queen and stuff. So it's like basically by the end of I don't know season two, season three, like Elfred has to like save the whole country or whatever. I was, you know, I was kind of curious, like, you know, he has the scene where at the end where he gets surrounded by the police. Oh yeah, talking about a cliffhanger, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm like. If he was going to get like, um, basically, he has to leave the country, and he has to, and he f- you know has to flee to America or something like that. Mm, maybe I don't know, but I mean that that would have been like a decent like season one cliffhanger, you know, him surrounded by all those guns. And that's why I'm just like, where where are you going with this story? Um, um, I don't know. Like I had no expectations for this show. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they start to build up as you're watching it and going through it. And it's just at a point now where I'm like, I don't, it's like, I don't even know how to feel about the show. I still, I like, I'm, I like it, I enjoy it, but I'm just like, well, where are you going with this? But, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I like it, I enjoy it, I like the performance, but at the same time, I'm like, it's not one I'm like, oh, man, you guys should check this out. Like, it's just like, uh, I like it enough for me, but I don't know if I would, like, really tell people you should check out Pennyworth because I feel like it's just become an unbalanced odd show. Like where are you going? There's like all these like threads and it's like, what what are you going to do with it? Yeah. But is it just like, is it kind of, is it like a Gotham odd, but it, but it's like, except for like Alfred and Thomas and Martha, we really don't know anyone else. Right. Is it, it's like, it's not, it's not a familiar, you know, it's not a Gotham. We don't have, you know, most of the characters are either people we know or like their parents or whoever. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like there could be more world building or something more to do with Alfred. I don't know. Some some of the stuff that's happened in this season feels more like that would have been a season two after we got more into his life and him back readjusting from service. Yeah. Because you know, it feels like we start off, he was you know, readjusting from service. He wants to start his own security company. And then when Esme dies, I mean, that was like a, that was like your mid-season, <laughs> you know? Almost, yeah. And it's well, like, then the whole show changed. It's like the end of se- episode three, I think she died. Three or four. Nah. Four. Oh, I think. maybe. Maybe. So, I want to say, because episode three was Martha Kane. Oh, okay. I want to say it was episode four. Yeah, because episode three was all about the saving the guy, uh, oh, the computer, the homosexual computer guy that they're trying to kill. Because that one, we want, we do a Charlie. Oh, yeah. And it was yeah, episode yeah, yeah. four that it flipped. Yeah. And that's the one that ends. And that's, I mean, and then five and six, right? Or six and seven were the ones that were like, huh? Oh, yeah. Or five. Last week, yeah. Episode seven. So. But, and again, too, I don't know if, like, I don't know. I have a bias against, like, prequels, but it's like, is it, does it, is it suffer the uh, weaknesses of the prequel where it's like, you know, nothing's going to help happen to Alfred. You know, it, nothing's going to happen to Tom and Martha yet. And that's why it it, it would have been more fun to just introduce him in an episode or two. Yeah. At the beginning, have him really get a bond with Miss Kane and miss, and then meet Mr. Wayne and kind of hit it off a little bit. And then Thomas and Martha leave. Mm-hmm. And then it's Alfred's show because, yeah, it's it's Alfred's story. He's the main character. But when all we know is eventually he's going to end up in Gotham. But anything else is off the table. All these people that we know, we don't know what's going to happen. And again, it's like, have they really built out any of these other characters we're supposed to care about? Like, no. I mean, Dave Boy seems like a cool guy, but I know nothing about him. Or Bass. Like, there's there's yeah. been no, there's been no like we're, we're not building up our secondary characters, or even Alfred's parents. Like, hmm. so I mean, I, you can kind of kind of put two and two together with Alfred's parents, but I mean, it's like, yeah, Dave Boy and Bass. It's just like they seem like plot devices when he needs like help, but otherwise, it's just like, oh, well, what do we do with them this week? Yeah, nothing in this episode. Oh, they just sit in the bar. <laughs> did they yeah. have? Did they have Alfred sleep with the with the uh, with the uh, bartender's uh, daughter just to like I don't know get her out of the picture to you know so they could just be like, oh, she's mad. She's not you know she's gonna hide every time you come in now. <laughs> Yeah, he took a plunge for nothing. Yeah, what I'm saying, they want to write the character out, or it's like, oh, if we don't want to use her, oh, here's a reason. Oh, he, you know, he slept with her and didn't call her back. I mean, I guess it's. I don't know. He just, it just feels unbalanced and weird. Like, it feels more like they're like making up as they go than having a clear 
like vision of this. I mean, of this. I mean, they had him take a trip with Martha in the one episode, but besides that, doesn't it seem like they want to go big, like oh, the whole country's at stake or something? But it's like it seems like they never leave like this the one neighborhood for the most yeah. part. The Raven Society sort of this huge thing in London, and then No Name League, yeah, which we don't really see anything of other than she's tr- the leader of the No Name League is nothing. I don't know because like, I, I and then I, if you have the CIA involved, like shouldn't they be actually more involved? Yeah, like trying to. So, except for that one guy talking to Thomas, we really don't even see much of the C. We really don't see the CIA either. So that's what I was saying. I wonder if that's where your problem with balance is coming from. Because it's like it's supposed to be a big worldly thing, but it's like we don't leave the one neighborhood. No, I just, I mean, they. I don't know. It's one of those things, like, unless it's the budget or time. I don't know. I don't. Have, like I said, I don't have expectations, and I don't really have an idea. But as I'm watching, I'm like, this is just awkward at times when it could be something really good. Yeah. But I mean, I, I like the guy that plays Alfred. I think he does a really good job. Oh, he's great. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he's great. I mean, I would even like it have been cool to have an episode or something where Alfred's father, sick, injured, big event. So Alfred actually fills in as a butler. Oh, there you go. Like just to see that he has the skills and has done it before with his father. And then, you know, have some more jokes about Alfie, you'd make a great butler. Piss off. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Why? Well, I, th- I, I was just wondering if Alfred's father is going to get in some kind of trouble from the rallies or something, and he's going to have to like leave, you know, leave London and go to like you know the Gotham City. Uh, maybe, maybe he's Thomas's, you know, maybe he's Thomas's father's butler or something, you know. Yeah, because like pre-crisis, I mean, there was there were versions where like yeah, Alfred only came after because his father was the Wayne Butler, and then he passed away. And that was in uh, that was even referenced in the New Fifty Two. Oh, was it? Oh yeah, there, there was like Jarvis Pennyworth was writing to Alfred because the owls were coming. Yes. So, so I wonder if they would do something. Like, I mean, be basically be writing. I was gonna say be writing them out of the series unless they show you know Thomas in America with his new butler. I don't know. I mean, there's the thing is there's, there's a lot of ways they can go with it. It's just that they haven't decided which way they want to go. So it's like yeah. we're not really getting anything. And, and like I said, my my biggest problem is mainly just <clears throat> the fact that I don't feel like we're building up the relationship of the three that we should have. We, we should be having this big seeing these three, why these two people would trust this man with their son and why this man would be so loyal to these people. I just, I think they killed Esme too soon. You think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You and think? like, and he got all obsessed, so that's what they should have did. They should have been, the first season should have been them building up Alfred's relationship with Thomas and Martha, with Dave Boy and Baz, and then I don't know, maybe this that's the season one cliffhanger, you kill off Esme or sometime in season two, and then you, that's when he starts getting all obsessed. Because that's half the season's been him being all obsessed looking for her killer, and it's just like well, here's here's what you do. You, you the cliffhanger is kind of like what you said, like. You either have Esme killed the last second to last episode, or you have Esme killed. In the, but why she's getting murdered? Alfred's getting surrounded by the police and getting arrested. Oh, there you go. So you have this kind of like cutting back and forth with Alfred being arrested for something that had happened in the season. Yeah, he got set up for, mm. and then she's being murdered, so he can't be there to stop the murder. So that when season two were to start, Alfred's being released from prison to find out his fiance was murdered. Yeah. Um. And then he's gonna have to, you know, maybe pull some strings, call some favors from his new American friends, or, or he gets sent to America because he gets kicked out of England because he's he's framed for like being a traitor, like yeah. treason. But I just mean, yeah, I mean that could have been season one cliffhangers, like show her getting strangled, and you you don't even know if she's get she's dead yet or not. That's the cliffhanger. Oh, I mean that would be a great cliffhanger. I've heard of the same kind of like uh, you see like hands go around their neck, then they cut the black. Or do something, yeah. I but mean, I just mean they did it too early because, like, they had since he's been all obsessed, they really haven't built up Alfred's relationship with anybody. Like at this point, you could take Alfred out of the Pennyworth series and would it change that much? Like I said, you could watch Esme's death and then jump to the episode we watched today. And I think you'd be okay. Yeah, because like you'd, you'd be a little confused about why this guy, but even if you watch the other episodes in between, you're still confused <laughs> because it just seemed like the logic just. Pfft, 
they haven't shown me why is Alfred so intrinsic to this world. It's like you could take him out. It wouldn't change anything with Thomas and Martha at this point. It, I mean, his family would miss him. Uh, it, he's not really tied right now. He's not doing anything with the Raven no, Society. Or would, or the no, yeah, no. Why not just have been cleaner and had Esme murdered by somebody from the Raven Society? They were there to kill Alfred, and he wasn't there, so they killed her to send a message. Well, I mean, it's not epic, but it makes sense. Well, that's what I'm wondering. If it's, I mean, it seemed too easy because, like, that guy he killed, you know, he had the ring tied to his uniform. I was like, is this guy getting set up? Did they, I mean, think about this. Did uh, the Ravens or someone set up Alfred to kill the wrong guy? I mean, that's kind of what I thought the whole time, but it's so, it's already so confusing Mm -hmm. that I don't know. Like I'm already feeling confused about how the logic they got to this guy, his past with Alfred, and what they're trying to actually accomplish. I mean, I guess the guy's a psycho, but I'm just like, okay, he made people laugh at you one time, and you've been like, what, harboring this grudge for what years? Yeah, that's why I'm like, I, I, that's why I just don't, I don't, know, I don't buy it. I don't. It doesn't feel. You know, it just does not feel right I, so I, it almost seems like i some i think a lot of series 10 episodes does them good but i don't know i don't know if it's just the way they're telling the story is if maybe they're telling like a tw- they're trying to tell like a 22 episode story in 10 episodes yep because like some of the pacing it's like in the beginning it seemed like it was going fast and then all of a sudden it's like oh here's a slow episode here's a slow episode all right speed up again yeah so i don't know it just it it felt like it just became a different series in the past couple of episodes. So we haven't gotten a yeah, like you said, we haven't gotten an official announcement on a season two. So I wonder if they're going to be brave enough to do like Krypton did and end on a fin- on a cliffhanger or just be like here and then oh, they to work either way. Poor Krypton. Yep, I think that's the only saving grace of Pennyworth is I'm sure it's not as expensive as Krypton to to produce. I mean, yeah, it's not. You just have to make it. Seem but better. Krypton went all out, like cliffhanger, cliffhanger, like oh, yeah. really going out with the story. And then Krypton also, uh, they were like, ah, oh, it, it just they made season two with the idea of, oh, we're gonna get have a season three. They would they wouldn't cancel this. Are you crazy? Buy you fools. And that'll and, and again, I don't know if anyone's gonna pick it up because I mean. If nothing else, I mean, it's I'm sure it's expensive as hell because the whole everything you see is like an alien environment. Well, like I know you and I mentioned it, and I did with my some other of my friends. Like, you know, even if sci-fi was like, all right, guys, we'll give you a hour and a half TV movie yeah. to wrap up your story, kind of like you know they did with Battlestar Galactica had all like these movie one shots and in, in between their seasons and stuff mm-hmm. like okay we'll give you krypton the final whatever we'll kind of wrap up what you were thinking for season three in this movie and like oh okay well i mean bring closure to it and be able to go out on a i mean they went out on a bang but a bang of oh my gosh that's so awesome oh my gosh that's so awesome and i mean but the because the first season was so awkward because it found its footing but then it created this alternate paradox with the cape mm-hmm. And then who was actually Superman? Does Superman even exist? And Zod. And like I, I said before, like with the way that they do um, reproduction, if two people, okay, went up there and like Seg and Lyda put their blood in there, or when Lyda was born, okay, mm-hmm. it already has her genetic information. Yeah. So then, could you really just sit up there, like at the machine, and press? Oh, mix Lyda with Segel, baby. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, what what has to happen? Is we saw Nissa and Seg like put like blood drops in there, and that's how we got Corvex slash Jarrell. But technically, if it made you, your genetic information still in there in the system mm-hmm. that you could just pick yourself and then pick who you want to have a partner, have a child with, and there you go. I just I don't know, or maybe it's the whole time travel thing. It's like they could they should have did that in season one and like fixed it. And just used it for one season to like introduce this whole wor- the whole world of Krypton. But like, how far are we gonna go with this time travel? Where it's like, oh, super. Oh, did we create an alternate timeline? Is this an alternate timeline? 
I mean, it has to be an alternate timeline. I mean, there's no Superman. And again, you well, know, the, but then too, the one of your stakes, it's like, okay, you killed off Superman. Okay. So where's the, where's this going to end? <laughs> the ripple effect. And I would have liked something where like, we would have got like Adam strange talking about, you know, Superman saved my life. And he also did this for me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was here to stop this. And, um, more about did Adam know what was going to happen, but it's like it just the whole premise of what, you know, the, the whole thing about if there had been more with like Seg having to realize that I'm going to have to save Krypton just enough so it can explode. I don't know. And it's just like the whole thing with Pennyworth. It's like, really Satan? I mean, <laughs> at least, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it, it, you know, or at least make a poor bath is Dr. Hurt or something. Or, yeah. Dr. Hurt would have been fine. Okay, like Dr. Hurt, if it had been, you know, this is Dr. Hurt instead of Crowley, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I can, co- I could buy into that story. Or, Call me epics. Or, you know, something had happened and, you know, we got introduced to this character and then Thomas Wayne needs help and he meets Zatara. No. Yeah. Or Jason Blood, because that's a character that could be any time frame. You know, he's immortal. So something where like, oh, a little bit of magic, a little bit of the Justice League dark. But but it's like okay. But it's like except for that one story, it doesn't seem like they everything seems very realistic. No superpowers, like, no supernatural except for that one storyline. So it's like oh, And then it's just it's just out of place. It's like somebody oh he, like the writer like, Hey, you owe me a favor or produce my script. Or is he just a con artist with, you know, doors that electronically close and you know, oh hey, look, made a point of yourself. Yeah. Hypnotic drugs and suggestion, you know what I'm saying? But they, it's like they didn't go either way enough for us to figure it out. Uh, speaking of Alfred, okay, I'm going to jump over real quick. We can wrap this up. But I have now personally in my brain had to personal retcon to Titans that that's not Bruce Wayne, that's Alfred. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because I had a guy, like I saw a guy post on a thread. He's like, wait, that's Bruce Wayne? I thought that was Alfred. And I'm like, and I said it the first time I saw it with Jania. If you told me that was Alfred, I'd buy it. I'm down. It's awesome. But him as Bruce Wayne is not working. It feels weird. It looks too old. I don't see him as Batman. Even some people said, oh, imagine him as an older Adam West style Batman. I'm like, okay, but it doesn't fit the rest of this world. I mean, how old is he supposed to be? Like, I would, like, I would buy like a 50 year old. Batman or something, but it's, he, he, I don't know if it's the hair. He just looks like he looks way too old. You're he right. Like, he looks like he, he he looks like the beginning of Batman Beyond when he decides I, to put down the suit. I think I said that. Yes. Yeah, I think you did too. Like, but um, he just I don't see him being the one that finds out that Damien's his son or Tim and continues on. There's not that. You there's know. not like that big age gap between him and Dick Grayson. Yeah. That, see. Okay. So like. I've always said it as and, like the age gap is almost like yeah he could be almost old and see his father but this it's, is where it's, but it's also Brian older like an older brother. See Brian Peters, if you're watching, which I hope you are, this is Phil. Phil's the man when it comes to Grayson because we got into this. Brian, he's been uh, joining the podcast when we do our movie reviews yeah. that are up on our YouTube page, and uh, he was back in our Shazam review episode as well. But him, James, and I have an ongoing thread, and we got into a whole discussion about the Robins and how, you know, the compression of time that they did, mm-hmm. like after the New 52 and shrunk the timeline for aged up Dick and shrunk the timeline so that you could get all the different Robins in there without making Batman like 60 years old. I think it's that me and Lilith were talking about. We're like, New 52, it was almost like, oh, Dick was Robin for a year. Jason was Robin for a year. Tim was Robin for a year. Well, I mean, Tim, that, they, that's where they got the whole Red Robin. He was never – he appeared sometime during with Jason and the end to Damien yeah. because he was never actually Robin. He was just Red Robin the whole time. I think they rebirth fixed that. So, I mean, it's just one of those things. They sh- they compressed it, and we were talking about how you know Dick Grayson is kind of Bruce's brother more mentality, and Jason's like the rejected child, and then Tim is – Tim and Damien are the actual children. Oh, yeah. So that's why we should just get in. You know, I just need to start. I just need to tag you and uh, make a thread just called the discussion of the Robins. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think in Titans that the end of this season, Jason Todd needs to die. 
and then, you know, set up for Red Hood. Because for some reason now Solomon is obsessed with Red Hood. <laughs> nice. He, he, what, he saw something with Red Hood. Oh, he wanted to watch Under the Red Hood again. We watched it. And then we got that Lego one. And he liked that. Oh. And then uh, he saw that new Red Hood figure, the multiverse figure. Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, Daddy the Red Hood. Uh-huh. So, yeah. My, my son likes the anti-heroes, I guess, now. But, but yeah, all I have to say that that I'm just retconning it until they actually cast someone to be Alfred on Titans. That That's actually Alfred just pretending to be Bruce. It does. It looks like Alfred. For a split second, I thought it was Alfred. Like, if I ever bought the season, I would, like, digitally make my own copies of episodes with him in it. And every time he starts to say Bruce, they I would just put my own voice saying Alfred. Uh. So it's not that big of an age gap. But all right, any anything else, Phil? We got ah uh, no, I think that's it. Uh but if you want to hear more uh, Robin's talk, yeah, check out uh, Nightwing News in like two days or a couple days. Kaka, crack an egg on it. <sighs> that was my favorite part of Teen Titans Go to the movies. As soon as like my ominous catchphrase. Crack an egg on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, only two uh, episodes of Pennyworth left. So, uh, yeah, email us, capesalunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow Before the Bat on Facebook, on Twitter, at Before the Bat Pod. Uh, follow Capes and Lunatics on Instagram and call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38 capes all right mr tyler patrick where can people talk robins and krypton with you uh at the krypton report podcast um we will be posting new episodes and you can find me on twitter facebook at jty patrick or krypton report all right Come back next week. Let's find out what happens to Alfred. Yes. Does he get, sh- does he get shot? Yeah, you know he doesn't. I just wonder if, you know, <clears throat> Thomas and Martha shared a drink this week. What are they going to fucking close? When are they going to create the world's most perfect person? Well, I mean, what? it's still kind of weird. If you think about it, because, like, are they trying to create Batman 89? You know, like, if it's in the, say it's in the 60s, even if it's, like, 1969. If they had Batman, like, in 1970, you know, it means he would be, year 2000, he would be Batman. I guess, yeah. It's sliding time, I guess. I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> Cause I feel like I feel because I feel like Martha and Thomas are even Thomas just feels old. Like he already feels like an old person. Mm, I think he's just well, it's the mustache. <laughs>